one month from today, parts of Texas, including Dallas, will experience a total eclipse, about four minutes of total darkness in the middle of the day. And while there is excitement about this event and everything that comes with it, there is also, depending on where you live, a very understandable level of concern. The Perot Museum and WFAA have partnered to host a series of eclipse events on April 8th. Since Dallas is the largest metro area in totality in Texas, some estimates suggest there could be a 35% increase in hotel bookings on that day alone. Airlines like Southwest and JSX even offering flights in the path of the eclipse. Astronomers from around the world will be here to watch the four-minute, once-in-a-lifetime event. It's very hard to describe. It's almost like a religious experience. It's, it's just... Uh, it, it's very powerful. People are going to be very uh, excited. It'll be one of the highlights of their life, I think, in many cases. But smaller Texas cities are a bit more cautious in their praise. Bell County in central Texas, for example, issuing an April 8th disaster declaration because Eclipse tourists could double the county population that day. We'll take a closer look at the excitement and the concern tonight at 6. In Dallas, I'm Kevin Reese. In the Perot Museum videos promoting the total eclipse, astronomers admit they are downright giddy about all of this. I'm super excited about the eclipse. Uh, John Mulcahy, for one, with the Carnegie Science Center in Pittsburgh, who will be with us at the Perot Museum next month. It's very hard to describe. It's almost like a religious experience. People are going to be very uh, excited. It'll be one of the highlights of their life, I think, in many cases. People so excited that hotels across Texas in the eclipse path from San Antonio to Sulphur Springs are booking up fast. The Dallas Omni with special room rates and a viewing party near the outdoor Pegasus. Airlines like Southwest and JSX offering flights directly in the totality path. It is a once in a every 200 year phenomena. The CEO of Visit Dallas says they used a previous event in Nashville as an estimate. And in doing that, we have been able to determine that we are expecting about a 35% increase in overnight visitation compared to previous years on a typical Monday in April. But in all this excitement, there is also concern. Bell County in Central Texas issuing an April 8th disaster declaration because they're expecting the population to double. Schools in Kaufman County declaring a school holiday for that same reason. Kaufman County predicting 200,000 extra eclipse tourists that day and all the traffic headaches that come with them. But as the Perot clock counts down, astronomers say get ready. The next one won't be till 2317, so that's quite a long time uh, to wait. So whether excited or concerned, this is your only Texas chance. In Dallas, I'm Kevin Reese. It's nice being downtown. Downtown Innis is small. We're all just friendly. Yet endearing, if you don't believe that. Somebody will walk in and they're like, oh, we're new to Innis. Come see Amy Sims and Amanda Tyner. And we get to tell them about the town. Their boutique shops are right next to the other. And a lot of people will, April 8th. Innis expecting anywhere between 50. We really don't know what to expect. And 200,000 folks for the total solar eclipse and with open arms. Shop owners, they are definitely ready, but small towns like Ennis and Ellis County that are in the path of totality, their population is going to double, even triple within days, bringing the question, is critical infrastructure up to the task, like police, fire, and emergency services? Our emergency management staff is working with our sheriff's department. Ellis County Judge Todd Little says preparations have been in the works for weeks. He and county commissioners are considering a disaster declaration to better mobilize local funds and resources. We've got 970 square miles here in Ellis County. People are very spread out here. Ellis County's vast open space does come in handy, but traffic still a concern to Little, especially getting emergency vehicles where they need to go. There will be issues medically that come up if we have 100,000 new people in Ellis County we got to have the ambulance service ready to go. The county working with DPS too, and a declaration decision may come closer to the event when the forecast is clearer. A cloudy or rainy day will ruin this massive viewing party and might send folks elsewhere in Texas. Delcus, you know, I follow that guy all the time. I hope Delcus is on point for this one. I mean, we're excited. Yeah. We're ready. For Sims and Tyner, the eclipse likely means a ton of profit. 
going to be fun. <laughs> Hi, girl. Okay, I'll see you girl. later. See you. That they and others hope to share side by side. In Innis, I'm Matt Howerton. Wyoming, Texas. You can argue both are similar. The wide open spaces and sort of a cowboy attitude. But we'll have much more in common come April 8th when the next total solar eclipse passes through here. The last in the U.S., Wyoming in 2017. We had visitors coming from all over the globe. Well, we easily doubled the population of the state. This is Doug McGee. He's from Wyoming's Department of Transportation. All those people created quite the snarl on highways after the event. There were times when I thought for sure you could walk 175 miles from Cheyenne to Casper on the hoods of vehicles and never touch the ground. According to this after action report from the state, the sudden high volume of traffic was a major issue. The Wyoming Military Department even wrote it would have been difficult to respond by ground vehicle to any location along major highways. So here they are on the side of the road. Uh, nature's calling. McGee even said a lot of travelers were seen using the restroom on the side of the road because traffic wait times were so bad. Now, if you've ever sat in rush hour traffic in the Metroplex, you're probably looking at these images and laughing a bit. And yes, Texas is a bigger state than Wyoming. Our transportation infrastructure, more elaborate. But for smaller highways in rural areas like Ellis County, where the totality is gonna be the best, and there's gonna be a lot of visitors from out of state, they may very well see some of these problems. We really should have thought of how could we release all that pressure. McGee has actually spoken with Tech DPS and local law enforcement here about what to expect. This congestion no longer his problem, but it could soon be ours. It's four minutes, years in the making. On April 8th, a total solar eclipse will cover North Texas in darkness. But if you're not careful, it could leave you in the dark. Looking at the solar eclipse, you can do damage in a shorter time of 60 to 100 seconds. The real problem is, is that the retina doesn't have pain receptors, so you really don't know that you're doing damage at the time. Dr. Amanda Holscher showed me what to look for. Be sure your glasses comply with the ISO 12312-2 International Safety Standard and come from a reputable vendor to avoid counterfeits. They meet the requirements. You may be tempted to just grab a regular pair of sunglasses and then pop them on to watch the solar eclipse. But use these instead. You can get them for free at every branch of the Dallas Public Library. We wanted to hit every age group, so in addition to providing uh, free solar eclipse classes to everybody, we also have after school and weekend programs uh, happening now until the day of the eclipse. I worry about kids and people thinking it's funny, oh, I stared at the sun during the eclipse. It's, it's actually something very serious and you could do irreversible damage. Thankfully, the Perot Museum of Nature and Science gave out a million pair of solar eclipse glasses to at least 14 local school districts. If you're looking to buy, the American Astronomical Society created this list of certified retailers like Bucky's, Kroger, even Walmart. I think we should enjoy the moment. They, they don't come around very often and take safety precautions, but you know, what a moment. In Dallas, I'm Dia Wall. Counting down 20 days to go until the total solar eclipse hits parts of North Texas. Millions of folks expected to be watching as the moon passes between the Earth and the sun. ERCOT, though, says it could impact our power grid. Yeah, some areas of North Texas will be enjoying the longest durations of what's called totality, and that's the problem. ERCOT says we could have anywhere from 81 to 99 percent coverage of the sun, which will, as you may imagine, impact solar power generation. Officials will be closely watching the grid a little after noon that day, just after 3 p.m. They are making it clear, though, that the grid conditions should be normal. Now, that eclipse will be visible within a nearly 500-mile path across Texas. Now, here in our area, the sun will be completely covered for about four minutes from, set your clocks, 140 to 144 p.m. in the afternoon. We've got everything you need to know, including where to get those free glasses to take a look at the eclipse on our website at WFA.com. In a couple of weeks, when the sky goes dark, many of us will look up. Everything is a circular orbit. But Kim Brewer says it's also a good time to look back. From the beginning of man, people stopped to look at solar eclipses. And what are we doing? Brewer, a history professor at UT Arlington, says solar eclipses, like the one we'll see April 8th, have always been captivating. Which is why you all are excited to see this eclipse. And throughout much of human history, equally terrifying about the eclipse of the sun king of the maya civilization understood eclipses and got pretty good at predicting them
they still believed the sun's disappearance was no coincidence. They were thinking, the sun god is angry with us. What have we done? What do we need to atone for whatever we're doing? Because next time, maybe the sun won't come back. Where the Maya saw a god, other cultures, like the Chinese, saw dinner. Whether it's a celestial dragon or a wolf or a jaguar or something's eating the sun. Brewer's medieval technology and scientific thought class has been studying these nearly 300 year old charts which document mankind's historical understanding of the cosmos. These charts. This is a book called Cosmography. In this book. Uh, this is a book from 1534. Are housed within the special collections at the UTA library. You know, this page here is showing. Evan Spencer who oversees the archives says as to celebrate April's solar eclipse, all of this and more will be on display and open to the public starting next week. A chance to see how our understanding of solar eclipses may have changed, but our obsession has not. We're still looking up at the stars trying to understand new things. It's our time and we all better hope that the gods, the fates, the dragons take the clouds away for us. If they don't, forget history. All we'll have is a shady past. So they're looking at it for different reasons. In Arlington, I'm Sean Giggy. The latest prediction is that the total eclipse will bring at least a million more people to Texas. That's why counties like Ellis and Kaufman have made disaster declarations, why TxDOT is banning wide load truck traffic that day, and why states that have been through this before are warning us too. Finally, we're seeing traffic volume numbers uh, in an hour that we would normally see over the course of 24 hours. Because people like Ingva Christensen and his girlfriend, Mai Antonsen, Girlfriend, yes. are on their way. Well, thank you for doing this. Uh, tell me where you both are right now. They live in Honingsvad, Norway, the Arctic Circle. They have the Aurora Borealis, but they've never seen a total eclipse. This is their chance to see one, and America, and Texas too. It's the leading country in the world, so it fascinates me on many levels. They want to see if Texas is what the world thinks it is. Well, I expect to see, for my part, a lot of cowboy hats, <laughs> a lot of uh, SUVs with uh, one person only driving. And heavy eclipse traffic is a concern for them too. I'm starting to worry more and more. About that. But their friends have asked them if they already live in Norway in total darkness several months a year. Yet you are coming here to get four more minutes of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> have you thought yeah. about it that way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And we are looking really forward to it. Looking forward to a once in a lifetime event. Just to be there together with a lot of other people with the same interest who like to, to, um, to, witness the wonders of the universe. Right, that's pretty neat, man. A celestial wonder worth the trip and worth the traffic, even for people who live a world away. I hope the trip is everything you want it to be. In Dallas. Oh, I think so. Thank you. I'm Kevin Reese. Um, this one over here. When you grow up in rural Ohio. They were just hard working farmers. You get a different view of the world. That's our first child. Open skies and stars you can name. You see one, you will see them all. Laverne Beiser was hooked after witnessing his first solar eclipse in 1963. Now he's ready to see his 13th eclipse and at the age of 105. Not a puff of smoke, not a sip of liquor, not a drug of any kind, lots of chocolate milk, and lots of good. <laughs> Laverne is an amateur astronomer. He became a mechanical engineer and worked on planes. He could take wood and make wonderful. I made that, that bed, bed. Like furniture, telescopes, but neither is his first love. That was back in 1945. Laverne didn't just make things. He made memories. She was smart and beautiful. What he can't remember, he can find in his closet. Marion said she would marry me. Yippee. Marion Beiser is his wife of 78 years. She died last year. I miss her a lot. We were always together. She saw all of them, too. They traveled the world to see the eclipse, planned all their vacations around them. This time will be the first total eclipse without her. You'd be sorry that she wasn't there with you. For the first time for Laverne Beiser in North Texas, the eclipse is coming to him. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for anything. And he'll be with family. Yeah, enjoy the moment. That's it.
Enjoy the moment. He also won't miss a chance to be engineer. Take two paper plates and a pencil. And astronomer all at once. Let the sun shine on the other one. That's not a, there's a point of light. That's a picture of the sun. This total solar eclipse won't happen in Texas for another 300 years. Laverne says live in the moment. Drink it all in. There's nothing better than that in the whole world. And don't forget the chocolate milk. I would have a, a beautiful, caring wife, too. That helps. <laughs> in North Texas, I'm Jobin Puniker. While millions will be looking to the skies for the solar eclipse, transportation agencies will be looking to the roads. Now, if you don't know what the solar eclipse is, it's when the moon will completely block the sun for several minutes, leading to temporary darkness. And several Texas cities have a front row seat to the action. County and state leaders believe more than a million visitors will either flock to our state or travel to witness the path of totality. That, of course, means more people on the roads, and those numbers have even forced officials in Bell County, that's just north of Austin, to declare a state of emergency. That county, home to about 400,000, could reach almost a million on April 8th. Here in Dallas, we're also one of the cities in the eclipse totality. That means hotels and other travel accommodations have been booking up quickly. According to Hertz Rental Cars, Dallas is seeing six times more in car rental reservations than last year booked for this same time frame. So if you need a vehicle rental, you might want to get on that quickly. Now, because of the concern for crowded streets and roads, several school districts across North Texas are also closing on April 8th, mostly citing traffic concerns and congestion as their reason. Corsicana, Ennis, Kaufman, Waxahachie, and Red Oak ISDs, just to name a few, are closing. The Texas Department of Transportation also put out a few tips ahead of the eclipse. They say to expect heavy traffic and sudden stops by drivers. Be on alert for distracted pedestrians looking to the sky and keep your headlights on while driving, even in the daylight. Last thing here, do not wear eclipse glasses while you're behind the wheel. And always keep your eyes on the road. Only view that eclipse once safely parked away from the flow of traffic. I'm Tashara Parker. You can follow me all over while I'm always asking you to talk traffic to me. Yeah, thanks to technology, people who are visually impaired will be able to experience a total eclipse. They will join thousands here at the Botanic Garden in Fort Worth. When you meet this Fort Worth mother, she'll tell you she has conquered a lot. Just because we have a disability, we want to do and experience everything just like everyone else. Alexa Owens is raising two children. She also works full time with the Lighthouse for the Blind of Fort Worth. We make insulated boxes for the military. We also make uh, AT&T boxes for damaged cell phones. Lighthouse has teamed up with Botanic Garden Fort Worth so people who are visually impaired won't miss the eclipse. They will use a light sound device that converts data to sound. That will allow visually impaired people to witness when the moon orbits between the Earth and Sun. Leah Rowe from Lighthouse narrated a demonstration. And that's your flute sound at total brightness or total exposure to the sun. And you'll hear the tones get deeper and deeper with the, the clarinet sounds as it transitions to the deep clicking. Things like this happen all the time, science like phenomenon, um, and that they can get involved and experience it. Lighthouse will also provide solar charts in Braille for people with vision challenges on all levels. And now Alexa is excited about the solar phenomenon. We can do everything just like you. And challenges others to make sure everyone is included in big events like the eclipse. In Fort Worth, I'm Scoop Jefferson. When thousands descend upon Innes, we are expecting um, up to 200,000 people uh, in our community. For our total eclipse, well, the blue bonnets never get old. Blue bonnets, which the city is known for. I mean, they smell good, they look good, everybody loves them. We'll greet them. And since so many, Japan, uh, New Zealand, uh, Australia, England, um, Iceland, are coming from all over the world. Look out for fire ants. Yes. The ladies of the Innis Garden Club. Can you girls picture this in two weeks? <gasps> It'll be so beautiful. It's going to be amazing. 
have a small favor to ask. We really want people to protect both their eyes and the blue bonnet flowers. The town's beloved blue bonnet trails. A Danish Garden Club started the Blue Bonnet Trails in 1951. Will be held in the days leading up to and after the eclipse. They do have a spirit and it's just a beautiful portrait. Aside from staring into the sun, looking at fields like this will easily be Innes's second best thing to do for visitors. But the Garden Club asks you not to pick them or kind of step around them, trample them. If you put a blanket down, put it in an open area away from the blue bonnets. And here's why. Here's an example of a, a blue, blue bonnet, bonnet seed pods seed have to endure the, the coming weeks. By June, these seed pods will get about two inches long, brown, they'll open up, their seeds will fall on the ground, and then they'll be ready to germinate in the fall. Thousands of people step on these beauties or break their stems. Seeds won't drop and fewer will come back next season. We protect them and we ask other people to protect them. This is a no-brainer for Texans, but... Follow the leader. <laughs> these ladies are hoping others get the message. They have always are blown away by how beautiful they are. After all... This is our happy place, watching the blue bonnets grow. They want to share a site like this. In large quantities, they look uh, almost like an ocean. Both now... Are you excited to have to sh be able to share this with everyone coming to town? Yes, I am. And for years to come. In Ennis, I'm Matt Howerton. Clouding the excitement for the roughly four minutes, Dallas will experience a total solar eclipse Monday, as if we'll actually have a clear sky to view it. I'm going to wish the clouds to go away. It would be a Sunday day. It's the same wish that tens of thousands of people predicted to come to North Texas to take in the view are making just days ahead of the phenomena. Dallas is the largest city in the path of totality. And Tuesday, despite the dreary forecast, city leaders laid out how they're preparing for the things they can control. Traffic is going to be the biggest challenge that day. Office of Emergency Management Director Travis Houston says they've drafted a traffic management plan focused on keeping emergency routes open and maintaining access to hospitals and highways. The day of, we're activating the Emergency Operations Center. We'll have representatives from all of those departments and agencies in the room with us so that as things come up and as we see how the day's progressing, we can have those face-to-face -face conversations and switch focus and close resource gaps. Trash pickup in Dallas has been suspended for Monday to keep those workers off the roadways. The city is also urging folks not to stop in the middle of the road to watch the eclipse and to remember not to look at the sun without those protective glasses. So this is the proper gear and you're going to see this throughout the city. Preparation has been all hands on deck from police and fire to parks and rec. Estimates on just how many people are coming to Dallas for the eclipse are still up in the air, but for context, about 99% of all hotels here in downtown Dallas are sold out from April 5th through the 9th. We have a lot of people coming both from out of town, but also just within the Metroplex. There's a lot of people coming, several very big events. And hundreds of Eclipse solar operations planned throughout Dallas and North Texas. And now all we need is the weather to cooperate. In Dallas, I'm Janelle Fort. Folks are coming from all over the country, the world. Going to the observatory. To see our total eclipse. It was built in 72, 73. Dr. Bill Kinsey in Ennis. Yeah. Just has to walk to his backyard. Okay. It's where an observatory he built with his son has stood for 50 years. Power, so. Kinsey, uh, if we were looking at the moon, has also stood here for decades. You're talking about uh, 300 miles with this big one. Watching Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, Mars, the planets. He was 10 years old. We bought a Sears $39 telescope. A passion built when his son Scott asked for something to see the stars with in 1966. When I tuned it, tuned up the the moon and. It, I was captured. You can imagine this 88 year old's excitement for Monday. I've seen three, two or three partial eclipses, but I've never seen a total. I'm hoping for a sky like today. Yet someone important. I think a lot about him. Will be missing. Kinsey's son Scott, the little boy who sparked a love for the stars in his dad, passed suddenly months ago at the age of 63. Do you wish he was going to be here on my Oh, I do. I do. Yet in some ways. I'll open the observatory, uh, tune in the sun. They both have a front row seat. I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. 
North Texas is preparing for a once in a lifetime experience. Oh, I'm ecstatic. Um, I teach fourth grade during the day and I've been talking to my students about this for months now and kind of been building the anticipation. Close to half a million visitors are expected to travel to DFW to witness an astronomical phenomenon. Jesper Busk and his son Storm came all the way from Denmark to Dallas, the largest metropolitan area in the path of totality. It will be their first time witnessing a total solar eclipse. Road travel is expected to increase by 30% Sunday into Monday. Hotels and Airbnbs are sold out across the Metroplex. Dallas police have blocked off road exits leading into downtown along I-35E, Woodall Rogers, Central Expressway, I-45 and I-30. It's like one of those things where you want to be as prepared as you can, but I mean, it's only a span of four minutes, I think three or four minutes of totality, and it's going to be really disappointing if it gets covered up by some clouds. <laughs> it's a weather situation that could affect the path of totality across the Lone Star State, an area that encompasses the entire I-35 corridor from Travis to Collin counties. Things don't really seem to clear up until you reach northeast Arkansas. That's about a 400 mile hike from North Texas and a six to seven hour drive. You'll also be paying more at the pump as gas prices are sitting above average at about $3.40 for a gallon of regular. Would you make the trip if you could go back? I don't think I would just because it's such a big investment for a couple of minutes, but I don't know, maybe if I had the time and the money to dish out like that, I probably would. In Dallas, I'm Stacia Wilson. How do you turn it? No, nah, pursue. You got to find out what makes you happy. Deontay Madison stopped by Dallas to see where he'll be a week from now. Perfect day to come out. Here at Trinity Overlook Park with his family for the total solar eclipse. There's another spot further down that's past the bridge. A moment he and a lot of Texans have been waiting for. We search for that sense of connection, belonging, acceptance. Carolina Pena is a mental health counselor here at Parkland. Have a seat, please. And what she's describing can be captured in two not so easy to say words. Collective effortness. Effervescence. This is a tough word. Right? <laughs> I've been trying to avoid it. Collective effervescence. The energy and harmony derived from a shared experience. Feeling supported, not feeling lonely, feeling that you belong. It's like what the Rangers winning the World Series did for so many. The eclipse is that kind of moment that can help someone in a dark space. And it's something that you can experience with your kids that you know that you might not ever be able to see again. Like, how do you not look forward to it? Tell me a little bit more about those plans. Carolina says we are wired to be social. Our physical health yeah. is connected to our mental health. And while the eclipse can be a sense of anxiety for some, it can also be the social trigger that creates positive social momentum. People that live longer are those who have a support system. You are enough. Deontay knows how important that is. It's a pursuit of happiness. We are looking for it. We are searching for it. Carolina reminds us all when the eclipse happens, clear skies or not, practice mindfulness. Stay in the moment. The rewards go beyond the day. And you get through the day, through that day, get through the week, get through that month, get through the year. In Dallas, I'm Joe Paniker. I'm starting to worry more and more. And with their about worries the, about uh, Texas traffic and weather, the skies will be clear. Right now, Ingva Christensen and Maya Antonsen are on the final leg of their flight to Dallas, all the way from their home in Norway. And they're not alone. We have folks coming from Japan and Tasmania, 11 European countries. That's in Hillsboro, Texas, between Dallas and Waco. But one million Texas tourists are showing evidence they are already on the move. This is the governor of New Hampshire. I got a call from someone from Texas yesterday saying that they were going to fly into Boston and should they come to New Hampshire or Burlington, Vermont or Maine to, to see it, which shocked me. And evidence from Airbnb, where listings are nearly 90% booked for the night before the eclipse and 25% of all reservations in the U.S. on Airbnb are in the path of totality. I'm addicted to that feeling of that being one with the universe and being really present and feeling it. Leticia Ferrer will have to decide if she's traveling too. I want to see every solar eclipse on the face of the planet. She lives in Farmer's Branch, but she's traveled the world and this will be 
her 21st total solar eclipse. My life is measured in eclipses. TexDOT, meanwhile, will be measuring traffic. 480 miles of Texas are in the path of totality, so they're halting road construction for the day and warning people not to stop on the sides of highways. And in their own public service announcement where a cowboy lassos the moon and pulls it into a total eclipse, they end with the simplest and most important advice. Be safe, y'all, wherever your eclipse journey and the Texas weather forecast might take you. In Dallas, I'm Kevin Reese. Eclipse Rush is here on North Texas highways and at both airports as tens of thousands of people make their way to the Metroplex, despite Monday's forecast. It's going to be cloudy, so we were thinking about, or we thought about uh, going to Vermont, and some people had said that if they wanted to switch flights and switch their car rental, it would be like $8,000 to change everything. A price tag too high for Dan Botnick and his friends who flew in from Boston. We've been budgeting. <laughs> this, this is actually... Uh, this hat is a you need a budget hat, and so it's been two years of putting money aside to make sure we could pay for everything. There's no tally yet on just how many people are coming to North Texas this weekend, but we do know hotels are reaching capacity. In downtown Dallas, they're already 99% sold out. Airbnb says it's 90% booked. Prices for what's left are sky high. And if you're looking for a rental car, good luck. The last time I checked was it's like maybe a day or two ago. It is the lowest one was probably about like 700 something dollars. So yeah, if you could find a car. A lot of money to spend without a guaranteed view. We're hoping that's not the case, that we still have visibility. Unfortunately, the latest weather models don't look great. They show the best glimpse of totality in Texas might just be from one of the flights offering the view from the skies. The pilots will be very creative and turn the airplane left and right to look at the eclipse. It could get an extra couple minutes, maybe six and a half minutes from an airplane versus those of us on planet Earth. And speaking of those eclipse flights, I've got good news. There are still some seats available. I've been tracking this all day. I found a flight on Southwest from Dallas Love Field up the path of totality to Pittsburgh leaving on Monday. Tickets are still available on that again. The price tag, $660. Reporting here at Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, I'm Janelle Ford. Back to you. It's almost time. It's a big deal. Come Monday, historic downtown Grapevine in for a historic moment when darkness covers the city. I've been you know, watching this for, for two years, waiting for it to happen. The Eisenbergs traveled from California to witness the once in a lifetime total solar eclipse with their Mansfield friends. The best part? Being with the friends. Being with friends and a glass of wine. That's right. There's only one problem. The, the weather change. The weather change. Mm. It struck hard. <laughs> Cloudy skies could spell disappointment for thousands traveling to Grapevine for the celestial event. We're looking on the bright side of things. <laughs> Hotel bookings in Grapevine close to full. The stage is set for a special event. At least one million people expected to travel to Texas to get within the path of totality. I'm excited about it no matter what happens. And you've got your son, which is the uh, the turkey. So is Dan Weinberger, the owner of Weinberger's Deli. We're thinking it's like Y2K. It's either going to be very big or it's going to be very bad. Weinberger's Deli getting in on the fun, offering this special blackout sandwich. Now, all along Main Street, you'll find each business putting its own special twist on this big event. Having the eclipse, how could you not do something that's as monumental as this is going to be. From special merchandise to specialty eclipse cocktails, businesses trying to give visitors the ultimate experience. Thousands of people from all over the world and all over the country. A phenomenon that doesn't happen often. Fingers crossed, we're looking for that break in the clouds. Bringing people together, even if it's just for a few minutes. In Grapevine, I'm Adriana Dalba. Imagine for a moment you are a soldier at war in ancient Iran and Turkey, roughly 585 BC. And in the heat of that battle, the skies suddenly go dark. Greek historian Herodotus wrote, day was on a sudden changed into night and the soldiers thinking it was an omen. 
ceased fighting and were alike anxious to have terms of peace agreed on. <laughs> but these days, if you're a modern expert in astronomy and astrophysics... It's basically just gravity, uh, so it, just gravity. <laughs> an eclipse is just basic math on a cycle repeating somewhere about every 18 months. Uh, astronomers were able to predict when eclipses would happen you know, 4,000 years ago, but they were not able to predict where it happened on Earth because they, of course, didn't have an understanding of what the Earth looked like. We met Dr. John Mulcahy at the Perot Museum, where he will lead eclipse viewing and education programs, and where he believes people will see the same celestial mechanics and magic that he does. We're on a tiny planet around a pretty average star in a very normal galaxy, and then there's trillions of those galaxies. I think sometimes the eclipse is a good reminder of, of kind of where our place is in that solar system. Whether we think we're exceptional or insignificant. At the That's time. right. It's, it's both. This is a combination of both. I often say once you've seen one, there's a really good chance that you will want to see more. Once you see it, it's such a, a magical experience that that's going to happen to a lot of people, I bet. Mulcahy okay, says this will be his third total solar eclipse. The next one in 2026 in Greenland, Iceland, and Spain. He plans to see that one too. But right now, like the rest of us, he's praying for clear skies in Texas. It's four minutes in Dallas, but it, uh, that four minutes goes by very quickly. Uh, so don't waste your time trying to take a selfie. All, all these things people try to do, enjoy the event. <laughs> Put the phone down. Put the phone down and enjoy Mother Nature for four minutes. It's a, it's a remarkable experience. Because it's an experience that math tells us isn't due again in Dallas for another 300 years. At the Perot, I'm Kevin Reese.